so hello, uh, my name is uh, Jerry Tyre, and uh, I'm going to speak about how to manage uh, VMs uh, on VMware via Ovid Ansible. Uh, when you sign up for the meetup, you might reach some different uh, title of this talk. That's because uh, uh, I wanted to talk about something slightly different. <laughs> and since, which is like uh, two months ago, when I actually uh, um, posted this uh, topic, um, I started to work with for someone, for someone uh, who is actually is using VMware. So I actually extended this talk to talk about something a little bit more than what was advertised. Um, also, I'm going to uh, mention some technologies which were developed uh, for the client uh, I'm currently working for, which is uh, Flextrade. Uh, so uh, they were so kind that they uh, agreed to uh, open source these tools and uh, Ansible roles and all around this, uh, so the community can, can use it. Um, so something a little bit about myself. So I'm using Ansible for like last five years. I contribute a couple of modules, uh, some filters, and uh, doing some bug fixes of some important modules, and doing time to time some reviews. And uh, you can uh, see my work on my GitHub site. And I publish my uh, roles also on Galaxy. So you can check it out there. So. Uh, you know, if, if, if I say like managing VMware, VMs with uh, Ansible, then you might ask yourself like, why don't, don't you use Terraform, right? Because that's what it made for. And I kind of agree, but there are some reasons for which you might not would like to use it. So one of them is that, you know, Terraform is a great project. It's nice to have something like that, uh, but it's not absolutely perfect. Uh, so sometimes when, when you define your infrastructure uh, for VMware in Terraform, you might find out that uh, you change some parameter and, and it uh, tells you I'm going to rebuild this whole VM because you just changed this. So that's kind of like a big surprise for someone. And that comes with this statefulness of, the, uh, of, of Terraform that it keeps state of each VM and if it differs or if it doesn't know what to do with the state, it says I'm rebuilding the VM, right? So that's also a problem uh, because if you have some uh, fleet of VMs and you want to start managing them, like increasing memory, CPUs, and so on, then you can't do it very easily with Terraform because Terraform is usually meant for infrastructure which was built with Terraform. So that, that there are some ways like Terraform import, which can import the infrastructure into the code, but the uh, results are not very optimal, so people don't use it that much. And also the language you use to define your uh, VMs and infrastructure in Terraform uh, is uh, not that great. I use a bit stronger word here. <laughs> but uh, the fact is that uh, there is too many uh, missing bits and uh, you, have, you have to apply uh, too many workarounds to achieve something like loops, conditions, and if you want to de uh, define variable, which uh, is partially defined from another variable, then you can't do that. So th there are some you know, gaps there. And uh, also, if you don't have these uh, essential building blocks, like the loops, conditions, and easy variable uh, definitions, then you find out that uh, you keep repeating the code just for the uh, sake of you know, having that thing defined slightly different, but you, know, you can't put if condition around certain things, so you need to copy the whole block and then you have massive uh, uh, data redundancy. So Ansible is not great either. You know, we all know that, right? There's a lot of uh, bugs uh, and so on, but uh, uh, main problems when it comes to the VMware infrastructure is that it doesn't support all the features, although it improved quite significantly. I started to work uh, with VMware through Ansible like two years ago, and nowadays it's much, much better, I can tell you. Before you couldn't do much, you could just create VM, and that, that was it. You know, Today you can do much more. And uh, it's not stateful, so you can take Ansible, and say, I want this VM to have more CPUs run. And it works, although you didn't build the VM with Ansible, 
but uh, you, you can manage uh, existing VMs with that. The advantage of this is that uh, although you can run Ansible in uh, check mode, that means that it won't perform anything, then it, it doesn't actually give you a nice overview of what exactly is going to change because it didn't perform the changes. So this is something what Terraform does. So that's something you know better to, to see from Terraform. Uh, but Ansible can do things like uh, modifying existing VMs, uh, which are you know, built from uh, manually or through some other uh, tool. And it can also build VM and provision the applications on the VM in one command, which is quite cool. So what's supported uh, uh, by Ansible? So Ansible currently contains around 120 modules to deal with uh, VMware infrastructure. Uh, there are uh, groups of modules which fall into this, these uh, categories. So uh, managing the guests, which is basically the VM, so like the uh, disk, network interfaces, customizations, importing, exporting the, the, the VMs, and so on. Also, uh, the uh, ESXi host you can manage, so you can set, set uh, firewall rules, uh, managing the SSL certificates or NTP configuration and uh, distributed switches, clusters, data stores, content library, and a few more. So I didn't explore all those things. I explored just a few topics. Uh, and I explored the topics for building VMware templates and building VMs from those templates which I built. So I built a pipeline using Pucker, Ansible, and a little bit of shell scripts. And I am building uh, images for VMware and uh, Vagrant. And I'm building uh, images uh, for CentOS and Red Hat Enterprise Linux, version 7 and 8. For, that, uh, I, for the CI-CD pipeline, I'm using Jenkins. Uh, where, you know, I have pipeline similar to this one. Uh, I will show you later in more details. Uh, where we basically have uh, four steps. So first step kickstarts the, the VM uh, from an ISO, so it's a DVD or CD ISO, uh, that basically produces an artifact, which you use in the second step, uh, where you spin up that artifact as a new VM and run Ansible on it. So uh, that bit of Ansible uh, basically configures the image uh, with some basic stuff like uh, secure the, the SSH and uh, pre-install some packages and uh, build some drivers and so on. Then I uh, close that or, or shut down that VM and create another artifact which is uh, used in the third uh, um, step. And that third step is uh, for exporting the image in a specific uh, format. So I mentioned that I'm building uh, um, images for VMware and Vagrant, so basically I need to do something to make that image work in VMware and Vagrant. For both, you need to install some tools which allow the hypervisor to actually l look inside the VM and do stuff. So for VMware tools, it's uh, sorry for VMware it's VMware tools, and for Vagrant it's uh, uh, via uh, VirtualBox additions because uh, uh, Vagrant is using. Um, VirtualBox by default. So that's basically what's happening in this uh, third step. Uh, where I'm installing those tools, building some drivers, and uh, storing that uh, um, VM in a specific format. And then I'm uploading that image uh, to vCenter or s somewhere where uh, uh, Vagrant can, can read it from. Uh, for, because I'm using Ansible for this and this and that step, uh, this is like a collection of, uh, of roles which I'm applying on the image. Uh, I think that all of them you can find on my GitHub site. Uh, the same for installing the VMware tools and uh, 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 VirtualBox additions also are all. So all this you can find on my GitHub site. And I, I wrote a new role called uh, Image Upload, which allows you to upload image to VMware, obviously. So you can check that role also on my GitHub site. 
um, for building the, the VMs from those templates, uh, I, I created also a role. Uh, and I had the desired set of actions which I would like to do with that role, right? So I, obviously I want to build a new VM. Uh, I also want to be able to change parameters of the, those VMs. So for example, if I say, okay, I built VM with uh, two CPUs and two gigs of RAM, and then later on I, I say, okay, I want to have four CPUs and eight gig of RAMs. So you should go and do it in the code, run Ansible, and Ansible should do it for you. So that's another requirement. And also rebuilding the VM, which means you destroy the VM and build it again, but there are some, um, some things which you want to keep probably, and uh, that's like uh, disks with your data. So basically, I take that VM, find out which uh, uh, disks are meant to be kept, I detach them, destroy the VM, and then build, build new VM and attach the disks again, right? And also keep in Mac, address uh, for the business where I'm currently working is quite uh, important to keep Mac addresses. It might sound strange, but Mac address is sti still the thing, you know? So uh, it keeps also the Mac address in, on the uh, vCenter side that, again, I read the, before I destroy the, the, the VM, I read the information about the VM, take the uh, Mac address, and after I destroy the VM, delete it, create a new VM, then I say in the, the definition of the VM that it should keep that uh, Mac address. Uh, and then obviously I want to delete VMs uh, through this process as well, right? Um, so the challenges were, when I started to work with uh, uh, VMware infrastructure, how to get the right inventory, because you know, for running Ansible, you always need inventory, right? There is official Ansible VMware inventory, but it, I found out that it's not very useful because it doesn't allow you to create uh, custom groups. So it creates groups per uh, power state and guest ID. That means the guest ID is like, is it Windows, is it Linux, is it something else? So that's not very, very useful. Uh, and also the inventory is kind of like dynamic, right? It's a, a uh, inventory plugin with caching, so when you run Ansible, it connects to vCenter, gets the list of VMs, cache them locally for you, and then next time you run it, then it's, it's kind of faster. But first time, it's kind of slow, right? And you definitely don't want to wait when you are in, on the pressure to you know, do something. You don't want to wait like 30 minutes to get the, the inventory, right? So that was kind of like not very nice to me, and the second thing was that the inventory is kept in cache, but not in a file where you can kind of like review it. It's, it's not basically in Git, so you don't see the differences, what changed and so on. So for auditability, it's, it's kind of like missing feature for me. Um, second uh, uh, challenge was uh, how to automate all these uh, uh, desired actions, right? So as I said, I wrote this um, um, Ansible role. I wrote it like two years ago, but enriched it quite significantly recently. So uh, this role is uh, containing some uh, patches for the modules which are uh, in, in Ansible uh, core, but uh, those uh, uh, changes will be merged. I talked to the guys today on the VMware Ansible meeting and they reviewed it. There's a couple of changes which I need to do. So after I do the changes, so it will be merged and, and you will all get it in the version 2.10, now it's 2.9. So then uh, the inventory part, it was quite fun for me because uh, I had to do a lot of programming. I like to do programming, so it was kind of uh, fun. Uh, so for, for, for uh, getting the invent inventory, uh, I wrote a uh, Python script called uh, vCenter dump, uh, which basically dumps the vCenter VMs into a YAML file. So it's flat, a list of VMs with some uh, additional uh, information from the vCenter. Uh, it's uh, one file per vCenter, so if you have multiple vCenters, you always dump uh, uh, each vCenter into one file. Advantage of this is that you can put it in Git, right? So you can version it, you can see the differences. Uh, if you run it regularly, like we do, like every day, 
then uh, you can see uh, how the VMs are, are moving. You can do some reporting from it, which we do as well. Uh, and uh, it works the way that, you know, if, if there is a VM which is deleted in the vCenter, it will delete from the inventory as well. If the VM was rebuilt, so it has new UUID, then it updates the information with the new UUID if nothing else changed. If the name changed and the UUID stayed, then it updates just the name and so on and so on, right? And also, it's kind of important for Ansible to know where to connect. So you need to have uh, some uh, reliable way how to connect there, uh, ideally through IPs. So it also kind of tries to get the right, or the, the, the deduct the right IP from, from the VMware. And if it can get it from VMware, like you have VM with multiple interfaces, you don't know which one is the correct one and so on, they kind of do the reverse lookup for, for, for the name of the VM and tries to find the right uh, IP address. And <clears throat> in order to get that simple YAML file into uh, Ansible as an inventory, you need something what will translate it for Ansible to understand it, right? So for that, I created custom Ansible inventory plugin, which again is uh, open sourced uh, here. Uh, and that basically reads that YAML file, converts it to uh, other data structure and provide it to Ansible and Ansible knows how, how, how to, uh, you know, how to connect to those machines. Uh, so again, it's a, it's a plugin. So for, for those plugins, you, you, you can have multiple instances of the plugin. So uh, we use it like uh, we have uh, one definition or one, one file per vCenter. So there is one instance of the, uh, of the plugin per vCenter as well. Uh, the, um, this uh, kind of inventory can be used not only for VMware because uh, uh, it's basically just list of machines. It doesn't have to be VMs, it can be whatever. So it can be physical machines, it can be machines in, in the cloud. It doesn't have to be just from VMware, right? So just create another YAML uh, file and define machines in, in the format it, it kind of uh, ex expects it. And uh, you, you can use this inventory also for other machines. Uh, I've also created a tool which kind of manipulates that uh, YAML file on the command line, which is quite useful for, for the CI CD. So that uh, script is part of, of this repository, so you can find it there. So you can like add new entries, remove entries, update entries, and so on. And we use it in con con conjunction of uh, another uh, dynamic inventory script, which I have created years ago. And so it's called the YAML inventory. So it's a YAML list inventory. It's a YAML inventory, slightly different. Um, and that basically uh, this YAML inventory script is uh, used to create a group structure. So it's like a tree. So you have like some, some top group and then you have children of that top group and then you can have children of those children and so on. And that's really good for overriding the variables. So you can have the same variable defined on the top level. And uh, if you want to customize that variable, so you can define it, uh, override it in, 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 um, in the lower group. And so you can basically have glo uh, uh, global variable for everything else but this one. So it's kind of, that's the power of Ansible that you can um, work with the variables and keep overriding them in different groups and so on. And then this uh, YAML list uh, inventory, uh, as you can define group in the file, then it basically injects those hosts in that specific group the uh, YAML inventory uh, creates. So it takes the, the VM and puts it somewhere in the tree that this is the group, this is the group, so it matches them together and basically uh, creates you one big uh, inventory. Yeah? So this is uh, the format of the, uh, uh, of the file uh, which uh, the uh, we, we sent the dump uh, script creates. So it's basically a list, which is indicated by T's, right? And inside each item of the list, you have some keys and some values. So uh, from, from vCenter, we take the VM name, its IP, the guest uh, uh, ID, 
the state, whether it's powered on or off, and the UID. And you can also put some additional information there. So you can say where the uh, IP uh, is coming from. If you say it's manual, then that means that uh, next time you run the, the script, the recenter dump script, then it doesn't try to uh, uh, reverse look up the, the IP again, but it keeps whatever you write there, right? Um, and you can also, as I said, define the un unsimple group in there, uh, specifying into which group the machine f uh, goes, right? And as it is uh, YAML uh, dictionary, basically, then you can put any other information there. You can put owner there. You can put which, in which uh, data center it is, in which rack it is, in which position of the rack it is. You can put whatever information you like there and reuse this information later on in Ansible, right? And this is the uh, configuration of the uh, inventory plugin. So it's the YAML list uh, uh, inventory plugin, and which is, uh, uh, which is defined here. It's plugin, and it's the name of the plugin. And then you say uh, which data file it should read. So that's basically that, that's the that's this kind of file. Yeah. So this data one, data one. Yeah. And then you say if there are some uh, hosts which don't have any Ansible group, then put them in this group by default. Yeah? But you can also uh, define which uh, host from that file should be accepted. So by default, it's like a, a, every host, but you can also say, OK, accept only hosts which are Windows, CentOS, and Red Hat Enterprise Linux, nothing else. right? So the, uh, we sent a dump file, can dump everything, all possible OSs, but you fill it, filter it down to these. And that means that only those will appear uh, in the inventory in Ansible. So Ansible won't see the others. Yeah? Then you can also have ignore list. So basically that's a list of conditions uh, which if, if they apply, then that uh, VM won't be accepted into the list, right? So, for, for example, I created uh, conditions that if the state is powered off, don't put it into the Ansible inventory. So when you run Ansible on a group of machines, so those which are powered off uh, would fail. So like this, you won't get them because they are powered off, so you won't get them, right? Because they are ignored. Also, you, you can get the VMs which don't have any IP in vCenter, right? So also, don't, don't take those, because Ansible can't connect to them, right? And then you can also define, like, in, in the previous, uh, here, if I would say type, uh, sorry, type third party, then I can reuse that uh, thing here, that I say type third party and ignore those as well. So for example, uh, you can have uh, appliances from networking, uh, companies or some security companies and so on, which you, can, which you just pin up in your infrastructure, but you can't even log in inside. So you, you can't manage those through Ansible, obviously, right? So we're ignoring them as well. And this underscroll in front of it means that it's optional. So the type doesn't have to be there, right? But it's optional. And last thing, what you can do in the uh, uh, inventory plug, uh, uh, plugin uh, configuration is that you can configure grouping. So you can say, okay, create me group windows for all, all guests which start with win. Yeah? And like this, you can have many groups here. Right? So you can generate the groups or assign the, uh, the machines automatically into their groups through uh, grouping defined here. Right? And then when you run Ansible, then uh, you probably know more this uh, button command. So it's Ansible playbook. Uh, you limit your, your run on some host. And as an inventory, you use the directory. Uh, sorry, this directory where you have uh, the definitions of, of, of your, of your uh, date, uh, inventory plugins, right? So you don't use, you can use individual inventory plugin file, but you can use also whole uh, directory. And then all 
uh, files in the directory will be taken in account, right? And then your playbook, right? And if you want to uh, uh, see what actually is in your inventory, then you can use this Ansible inventory command with uh, uh, option dash dash graph, and again, the inventory uh, location, and that will print you the tree of, of your groups. So if you have you know, a lot of uh, groups and in inheritances and so on, so this is quite a good way how to visualize it. Yeah? That's all. <laughs> <laughs>